Hello. Today we're going to talk about blood vessels. Um, we'll talk about them like generically, their layers, and then we'll kind of talk about how they change for arteries, veins, and capillaries. So blood vessels are basically the highway system that's able to deliver blood throughout the heart. And it works closely with the lymphatic system. We're going to talk about that during our next unit. Basically, when plasma leaks out of the blood vessels, the lymphatic system is able to bring it back into the circulatory system. And we know that all arteries carry blood away from the heart, and most arteries are going to carry oxygenated blood. The exception would be the pulmonary artery because it's going away from the heart, but it's going towards the lungs, so it is deoxygenated. Capillaries are like the things that connect arteries and veins, like a capillary bed, and the capillaries are the vessel that actually has direct contact with the tissues, so that means that the oxygen is going to diffuse like directly between a capillary and a tissue. Arteries and veins carry it there and away, but they don't actually touch the tissue. And then veins carry blood back towards the heart, Normally, that is deoxygenated blood, except in pulmonic circulation, where we have the pulmonary vein carrying oxygenated blood back to the heart. Here is what I just tried to say in picture form. So if we start up at the top, there's our little heart box, and then coming out of the ventricles are our large arteries. And these are basically going to branch out into smaller arteries, smaller arteries, smaller arteries, smaller arteries, eventually until they get into the smallest arteries called arterioles. That word right here. So arterioles are tiny, teeny arteries. And they interface directly with capillaries. So the purple things in here are the capillaries. And then they drop off the oxygen to the tissue. And then now the blood is coming out this side, and it's going to get picked up by a venule, which is a tiny vein. And then that venule is going to kind of slowly branch into larger vein, larger vein, until finally we're back into our largest vein, like the vena cava, going back into the heart. And then this green is representing the lymphatic system, which we'll cover next time. Um, all blood vessels have a lumen. That's like the hole inside the blood vessel where the blood actually goes through. And all vessels, except for capillaries, have three tunics. The tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica externa. The tunica intima is the innermost layer, and it's named intima because it's an intimate contact with the blood. So like literally the blood runs through the walls of the tunica intima. Its structure is endothelium, which is simple squamous epithelium. So one layer of epithelial cells that are very close together. They form a slick surface that reduces friction. So the purpose of this is to basically make sure the blood has a smooth surface to flow through. Sometimes there is a subendothelial layer, so a connective tissue layer. If you remember, epithelial tissue is avascular, so it doesn't have any, any blood vessels. So if the blood vessel is large, then it needs this extra connective tissue layer to be able to supply it with nutrients. Tunica media, this is our middle layer, composed of smooth muscle and some elastic fibers. This layer is in charge of being able to regulate our blood flow and our blood pressure because it can cause the vessels to constrict and to dilate. Vasoconstriction means that the, the blood vessels basically become smaller and that would cause the blood pressure to increase. Whereas vasodilation is going to mean that the blood vessels get bigger which lowers blood pressure. So, bulkiest layer responsible for maintaining blood flow and blood pressure. And the tunica externa. Sometimes this is called the tunica adventitia. Just so you know, that means the same thing. This is our outermost layer, and it's made of connective tissue, of loose collagen fibers that protect it and hold it together 
and help anchor it to the surrounding structures. So we don't want our vessels like moving around everywhere inside of our body. We want them to kind of stay where they're supposed to be. And so this is the layer that helps hold the vessel in its place. Um, they have lots of nerve fibers and lymphatic vessels going through them. And larger veins also contain some elastic fibers. If the vein is, if the vessel is big enough, it has something called the vasa visorum, which is basically its own blood supply. <laughs> so if the vessel is small enough, it can get all the nutrients that it needs just from its lumen, from the blood that's like flowing through it. But if it's bigger, the nutrients can't make it out through the intima media all the way to the externa. So the externa has its own set of blood vessels just to keep it alive. It's very like meta if you think about it. It's like the blood vessels that supply the blood vessels. Here is a picture of that. So I know this looks confusing at first, but we have our three layers, the intima, the media, and the externa. And then this is comparing how they look on an artery and a vein and a capillary. Let's start down here at the bottom with the capillary. Remember the, or maybe not remember, but just so you know, capillaries only have one tunic, the tunica intima, and we can see the layer of epithelial cells and then the layer of connective tissue that it's attached to. And the reason they're so thin is to allow oxygen to be able to diffuse. If they had a tunica media or tunica externa, it would block their function. The arteries and veins are both large enough that they have all three tunics. So let's start on the inside. This is our tunica intima. So we have those epithelial cells really close together in their connective tissue membrane. And then the vein is the exact same thing. So epithelial cells and then the connective tissue membrane. And basically forming a nice smooth surface to help reduce friction as blood flows through it. Next, we have our tunica media, which is this muscle layer. And then also this stuff that kind of looks like Swiss cheese um, represents an elastic membrane. So we have muscle tissue and elastic fibers. And over here on the vein, we have muscle tissue. And notice that there aren't any elastic fibers over here. So that's one of the main differences between the artery and the vein, the tunica media. In the artery, the tunica media is more muscular and it contains extra layers of elasticity. And then finally, the tunica externa, that is the collagen fibers that wrap around the vein, helping hold the vessel, helping hold everything together and anchoring it in place. And those little dots in there represent the nerves and the blood vessels that supply it. It's worth mentioning that when we look in here, we see something extra in the tunica intima of the vein. There is a valve. So veins are like low pressure systems, so they actually need valves to be able to prevent the backflow. This is a helpful table that shows you um, basically what I just said out loud is like what they're made of. So these are our arteries and our arterioles. Look how high the smooth muscle is versus over here with our capillaries, they have less smooth muscle, more collagen. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about arteries in detail. So three main groups, elastic arteries and muscular arteries, and then finally, the smaller arterioles. Um, basically, the elastic and the muscular are the large arteries that are closer to the heart, and then as they branch out, they get smaller and smaller until the ones that interface with the capillaries are called arterioles. Capillaries are microscopic. They're so small that the red blood cells can only pass through single file. And again, why are they so small? So that the gas exchange can occur through their walls. They only contain the tunica intima. Gas exchange of nutrients, um, that could mean, you know, carbohydrates, proteins, waste products like urea, carbon dioxide, hormones. Oh, and this is a little throwback to semester one. The capillaries supply every cell except cartilage, because we know that cartilage is avascular, epithelial, because it's also avascular, not the cornea. Where does the cornea get its nutrients? From that vitreous fluid in the eye, 
and then also it lends itself the same thing from the humor. Veins carry blood towards the heart. Venules are small veins that interface with the capillaries. Veins have valves to prevent backflow. They have all three tunics, but with large lumens compared with corresponding arteries. So review of everything that we pretty much already said. And then here's a nice microscopic picture comparing an artery and a vein. So on the artery over here, we can kind of see the tunica intima, like right here, like it looks like this little pink layer. And then the dark blue or dark purple right there, that is the media. So the vein also has the intima, we just can't see it because it's so thin. And um, notice that it's a smaller media, and then maybe about the same size or slightly bigger um, externa out here. Because the vein doesn't have the muscle like giving it a structure, it kind of collapses in like this and looks all floppy. Um, okay, please let me know what questions you have.